Hey YouTube, how's it going? Christian Skudovic back with the Fantasy Football Profit. So let's just, um, we're going to talk today about, um, we got a few things to talk about before we get into it, but we're going to do just daily fantasy. We're going to go quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers, tight ends, and defenses. Just talk about some guys that are really good options and some guys who aren't very good options for this week. It's a fairly simple video. Of course, as always, we're going to give you our reasons why. We don't just want to give you a list of names, but we want to help you understand why we do the things that we do. Now I want to clarify, first off, I am using the Yahoo daily fantasy that's what i prefer i just always use yahoo i'm not saying it's the best it's probably not but you know i guess you get comfortable with something and that's just kind of what you stick to um i will be giving because most daily fantasy leagues um you pay prices for players i will be giving you the percentage of cost right so eli manning is 13 percent of your total salary this week that's because yahoo daily fantasy gives you a 200 dollars quote-unquote budget pay for your players and not all um leagues are 200 dollars, right if you go and do DraftKings, it might not be 200 it might be 100 so i wanted to be able to transfer this easy for everyone so we're going to go percentage wise and then of course you'll be easy to tell kind of what that takes up um again that's what we're going to get into but before we get into it first thing i want to say is uh i'm sorry i haven't been here for a while kind of getting back into it just moved out to college and so you know getting used to a lot of different things some leadership roles and um me a while to just figure everything out right and get settled and then boom now i'm ready and i've got the time and i'm very excited to be back at it so i'm going to be doing the daily fantasy videos every single week um, another thing that I want to say is you can probably tell that the video quality is not quite as good. The camera and the mic, they're not existent. I'm com uh, filming this straight from just basically the computer um, from the webcam setup, and that's not awesome. The equipment that we normally use, Rob, has all of it back um, back at home, and so unfortunately I don't have the best gear. Um, we're going to work on trying to buy better gear, but if you want to support us on that, you can go to our Patreon and you can pay like a dollar a month or five dollars a month and help support us get more equipment so that is absolutely huge if you want to do that again we i apologize for that it's just where we are um and then the other thing is that there are benefits to that and that's huge really uh, i don't like pushing the patreon we don't like asking you guys a lot for money um but in the sense that i'm mentioning it right now why would you want to use Patreon? Well, Patreon's huge. We simply do not have enough time to answer every question every week. Uh, Rob works full time. I'm a student. I have a lot of different roles. Um, if you want to ask me in the comments, I could tell you all the different things that you do. My schedule is insane during the summer. It's pretty fine, but come fall during the football season, I just am so crazy busy. And so we just don't get to every comment. But if you are a Patreon subscriber, you pay $5 a month, we will answer your comments in depth. You will get priority and we will help you dominate your fancy league so it is more than worth it five dollars and nothing is a five dollars a month is essentially nothing right that's like a coffee you know um but that you know just one coffee can really seriously help you in your fancy leagues i think it's absolutely worth it but again we hate to like ask for money all the time that's not what we're about so we don't mention it too often i just had to mention it this one time uh sorry for wasting a lot of time on this let's just get right into it and start talking about some quarterbacks All right, so first off, quarterback, I mentioned him a minute ago, Eli Manning. So he's going to cost you about 13% of your salary. And one thing we've known all offseason is that he's surrounded with great weapons. Um, Sterling Shepard, Odo Beckham Jr., Saquon Barkley, Evan Ingram, there is absolutely no arguing with his weapons. Um, yeah, Eli Manning didn't play great last week, but he plays Dallas this week, and I'm certainly not impressed with Dallas. Um, uh, with Dallas's defense and on top of that uh, he played the Jaguars D last week and that was a very good defense the Jaguars are a great defense and so you go from a very good defense with a rookie running back kind of figuring things out week one to week two play a much worse defense with fantastic weapons and your rookie running back's got a little bit more you know understanding of the game and should play a little bit better not like he's going to play fantastic or anything but every week helps with rookies and so that's huge Eli Manning is a guy good quarterback to target fairly cheap. We like him. Another guy is Pat Mahomes. Now, I haven't been huge on Patrick Mahomes all off season. Uh, Rob actually did this research. He did a lot of research for this video, so thank you, Rob. Um, and he pointed out Patrick Mahomes is a great option this week. Um, 
He's going to cost you about 13 and a half percent of your salary. That's not great. That's not bad either. It's a little bit on it. Certainly is on the cheaper side, although it's not insanely cheap. But he plays Pittsburgh. Uh, over the last eight games, Pittsburgh has been terrible. And you say eight. Well, that's weird. That stretches into last season. What does that have to do with anything? And that has to do with Ryan Shazier going down, right? Last year, they were a very good defense, very good defense. And then the last eight games, they struggled. And then Ryan Shazier went down and they got even worse. They were just terrible. Of course, Ben Roethlisberger and that weapons, that is probably the most talented offense in the NFL. Could be a high-scoring game. I would not be surprised if Patrick Mahomes had a huge day. In fact, we talk about huge days. What about Tyreek Hill, his deep wide receiver? Always a fantastic option. I believe Tyreek Hill had like 29, 30 fantasy points last week. That really is going to help Patrick Mahomes, who loves to throw the ball deep. There's another option. Um, but what about two quarterbacks you should avoid? Um, right? We talked about guys to target. We're not going to do too many players to avoid in this video. Leave me a comment down below and say, hey, I want more players to avoid if that's what you're looking for. Um, but I'm only going to do a few. But here are two quarterbacks to avoid. And one is Nick Foles. Nick Foles is a guy who's fairly hyped. Um, but we're going to say avoid him. First of all, he's going to cost you about 13% of your salary. Again, it's somewhat cheap. That's not expensive. But he plays... Um, versus Tampa's bad defense, which is also good, right? Awesome situation, you think, why not? However, Jeffrey is out, um, and he's honestly just been bad in week one. He was bad in the preseason. Um, I know that people are excited about him because of what he did in the playoffs, but it's a new season. There's a reason that he lost his job. There's a reason he's a backup. Uh, it's nothing against Nick Foles, but we're going to say avoid, 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 right? And so that's what we're going to tell you to do. It wasn't great. You look at week one, they scored like, what, 16 points. It wasn't a fantastic week. His number one wide receiver is down. Nelson Aguilar, his other wide receiver, number two, has been kind of banged up as well. So you do just have to wonder what's going on there. I'm going to stay away from Nick Foles. And then the other guy is Josh Allen. I don't want to say too much on this. He's going to cost you about 10% of uh, his salary. Um, so that's very low as far as price goes, but it's very risky. And however it is tempting, um, you really think Josh Allen's going to be that great of an option? I don't. Um, you just talk about like he's still getting into it and understanding things. And we're just going to say to avoid him because he's just not been great so far. And that's one of those guys wherever your rookies come out and they outperform what we expect. And absolutely. But we've just seen nothing from Josh Allen that says get excited. Um, he doesn't have an amazing matchup. Sometimes you'll start a not great player, right? If they're playing against the worst defense in the NFL, you might do that, right? But he's not this week. So don't worry about it. Avoid Josh Allen, even though he's cheap. Um, so that's kind of some of the quarterbacks. Again, leave a comment if you want to hear about more quarterbacks or if you have specific questions. I'll try to get to some of them. However, I don't get to both. Again, that's the point of Patreon. So if you want to do that, of course, I'd love to really sit down and help you guys hammer out every single week how you can dominate your daily fantasy. But let's roll into the running backs now. All right. So I was actually pretty surprised. Rob did all of the research for the running backs and something that he pointed out that I was very surprised about is that there are a lot of fairly good options this week as far as cheap running backs. Not amazing options, but pretty good options, right? When you talk about daily fantasy, you got to save money somewhere. You have to, have to, have to save money because of the pricing system. And there are a lot of guys who are fairly solid guys who are cheap, right? Alfred Morris for 7 to 8%. Here's the thing. First of all, he plays for the 49ers. Last week, he wasn't fantastic. It wasn't great. But he played the Vikings front seven, arguably the best uh, front seven in the NFL. And if not number two, and if not number three, or like they're insanely good. There's no arguing with that. And so that was a really huge thing that really deterred him from having a good week. On top of that, um, he's been on the team for like a week and a half. Like he has not been on the team long. And so as time goes on, his carries are going to go up. His touches are going to go up if he continues to impress like he has. Now, this week, he goes on, he plays Detroit defense, who honestly is bad. Um, uh, sorry, I'm kind of freezing up a little bit there, but Isaiah Crawl had a very good week against them. Um, in fact, I believe we're going to talk about Isaiah Crawl. I might as well do it next. Um, but so did Sam Darnold. That defense was just brutal. I don't know any other way to say it. That's a great matchup and a guy who goes from a terrible matchup to an awesome matchup and is only going to cost you 7 to 8% of your salary. That's huge. Um, so I absolutely love that right there. Now, what about Isaiah Crowell? Uh, just mentioned him. 
8%. Uh, we advertised him all offseason as a great option, as a solid RB2. He crushed it week one, 10 carries for 104 yards and two touchdowns. Man, we were right. Like, I hate to brag on ourselves, but like we were right. All offseason, we loved him. Boom. It was one week, but boom, he comes out week one, 100 yards, two TDs. There's no arguing with it. He seems to be very legit. Now, again, we just mentioned, you know, bad defense or whatever. But it doesn't matter. You know, if you perform, you perform. You know, sure, he played against a not great defense, but he still had 100 yards and two touchdowns. Um, and we are just in week two. And so we're going to wait to see things shake out. But, man, things are looking good for Crowell. Now, again, he's going to cost you about 8% of your salary. Another guy is James White. Unfortunately, I was huge on Jeremy Hill this, uh, this offseason. He is out for the year. Boom, he's gone. Rex Burkett questionable now you have james white he's going to cost you about seven percent of your salary and i absolutely really like james white for this week um their wide receivers not a great situation you could see 12 to 15 targets this could be an awesome week for james white in fact james white's a guy who is always for the patriots just randomly throughout the season he just kind of shows up out of the blue and has a great week and it's like what the heck where did this come from well you do your study and you understand this is could be one of those weeks this absolutely could and he's very cheap Another guy is Tevin Coleman. We talk about, like, Tevin Coleman's the best backup running back in the NFL. I don't know if there's any arguing it. Maybe Latavius Murray, but honestly, I'm going to give it to Coleman. He's going to cost you about 8 to 9% of your total salary for this week, um, and that's just a huge start, simply because Freeman is questionable with a knee problem. And if Freeman doesn't play, um, Tevin Coleman has RB1 potential, and he's going to be very cheap and cost you about 8 to 9%. Love that option, so that's... Huge, huge, huge. Watch the injury report because if Devonta Freeman does play, that hurts his value. However, again, he's still fairly cheap. Another guy is Adrian Peterson. Uh, this offseason, we weren't huge on Peterson when he went to Washington. We still weren't huge on Peterson. But on a week-to-week -week basis, we like him, and here's why. Adrian Peterson is going to cost you 9% of your salary in most. Now, again, this varies, right? I'm going by the Yahoo numbers and then converting it to a percentage to make it better. But it does vary from league to league. So uh, just know that. And let me know how big the discrepancies are. I'd be very curious to learn about that. Anyways, he plays a terrible indie defense. We talked about how bad Detroit was a little bit ago. Indianapolis's defense, the Colts' defense, would be the worst in the NFL this year. I would not be surprised. They made, um, excuse me, they made Joe Mixon look very good last week. Not to say that Joe Mixon is a bad running back or anything. He could be a very good running back. I know Rob has been huge on him all offseason. However, week one, Mixon looked great. Heck, why doesn't Adrian Peterson? The job is open. We like him for this one week. Other two guys, uh, Lamar Miller and Carlos Hyde, they're going to cost you about 10%. They're cheap. They're solid plays. We like Lamar Miller better. He doesn't have any competition at running back. That is his spot. So we like Lamar Miller. He had 4.9 yards per carry last week. Let's see if he can do it again. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, and then the one running back that I'd say to avoid again, I didn't want to focus too much on the avoid these players list. But what about Leonard Fournette? He's going to cost you quite a bit. I think um, it was about, I can't remember what it was. I didn't write it down here, and that's my fault. I think it costs about $26, about 13% of your salary cap. Doesn't sound like that much, but he's questionable and may not even play at all. On top of that, he's going to play the Patriots defense. On top of that, last week, he was awful. He had five carries for 24 yards against what is not a great Saints defense. And again, I'm making a lot of claims about how good or how bad defenses are. This is through a lot of research. We don't do a lot of defensive videos in here, but I do spend a lot of time on it. And I do think that the Saints defense will be okay this year, but they're certainly not good. Fournette has a history of injury problems. If it says he's questionable, he's questionable. He might not play. He really might not play. Um, and so... Probably going to want to avoid Leonard Fournette this week. DJ Yeldon might be a good guy to pick up. Who knows? Uh, so those are kind of some of those running backs. If you want to know some more running backs to avoid, just ask my opinion. I'd love to talk it out in the comments down below. Um, let's move on now. I don't like to take too much time, waste too much time. We should talk about the wide receivers. Okay, so first off, we're going to talk about Chris Hogan. Another guy, not absolutely huge on Chris Hogan this offseason, but he is a good option for this week. Um, he's kind of this, uh, he's owned, uh, he's going to cost you about 8%. Um, there's really not a huge um, 
amount of talent in that Patriots receiving core. You've got a fantastic quarterback in Tom Brady, um, cheap option in Chris Hogan, and he's a nice deep threat. Uh, not a lot of competition there. A lot of balls could go his way. Um, there's not a whole lot to say. It's just a very simple, who else are they going to throw to? Also, who is throwing to him, right? Simple as that. Tom Brady is a great option, and Kevin Coleman could have a very, very good week. So don't underestimate him. Again, if you're looking for a cheap wideout, which we press saving money, and maybe I should stop and talk about this right now, but anyways, he's a good option. So let's, let's stop and talk about that. I apologize. We're about 15 minutes in this video. I don't exactly know how long, but um, maybe I should have mentioned this more. Um, Really, 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 guys, we emphasize the idea of managing your money properly. If you're going to win daily fantasy, you have to take chances. Winning your fantasy league, no matter what type of league it is, daily or if it's a keeper league or a bidding league or a redraft league, I don't care what league you're in, you have to take chances. And so, you know, you might not be absolutely comfortable with some of the options on this list, but if you want to win, you got to hit home runs, you got to save money, right? If you want to be able to start Todd Gurley, well, then you've got to save money somewhere else. And so it's really important when we emphasize this. Now, we're talking about only players that are good deals. And hopefully when you save all this money, it will allow you to pay a ton for another player, right? I'm not talking about like Todd Gurley or Ezekiel out this week just because it's really obvious to play them, right? I'm not going to sit here and talk about the obvious things like, oh my gosh, Todd Gurley is a great option. Ezekiel Elliott is a great option. Guys, you're smarter than that. What we want to talk about is how can we effectively save money while keeping talent um, you know, in our starting lineup. And so absolutely, guys, remember that this is how we're saving money. But we're saving money for the bigger name players as well. So don't get too caught up um, in that. But then again, you have to do it. So here we are. We're going to continue now. Let's talk about Chris Godwin. Now he's going to cost you about 6.5%, which is very cheap. But listen extremely closely. This is a player, Chris Godwin. Only, only start him if Deshaun Jackson does not play. Now, right now, he is questionable, and he is under concussion protocol. We know the way the NFL works right now, guys. Modern-day football, if he's even close to questionable, like, right, if anything is going on there, he will not play. There's a very good chance that Deshaun Jackson doesn't play. But if he does play, then this really takes away from Chris Godwin's numbers, and so you got to avoid that. He did have a good week one, two amazing, athletic, fantastic catches, Plus, we see that, you know, of course, Mike Evans takes tons of attention away from the defense. If Sean Jackson does not play Chris Godwin for 6.5% of your salary, awesome steal. Got to love it this week. So let's talk about another one. How about Jarvis Landry? We've talked about Jarvis Landry so much all offseason. Again, 9.5% of your salary. That's what he's going to cost you. He's playing the Saints defense. We talked about is not fantastic. Um, not terrible. Right. I don't want to just trash talk every defense and, and pretend to be like be like that hype guy. You know, that defense sucks. No, they're an okay defense. But that offense is great. You talk about Michael Thomas as an elite receiver. Drew Brees is a Hall of Fame quarterback. Alvin Kamara is so dominant. Like he just came on the scene last year and lit it up. Um, other wideouts like Saquon Smith and Cameron Meredith, like they've got options, guys. They're going to score points. And so the question is, can the Browns score points? And honestly, either in my mind, either they get in a shootout or they get in a blowout. Either way, that ball is going to be thrown a lot. And Jarvis Landry is going to get a ton of targets. So Jarvis Landry for this week is a great, great start. Now, I've been very hyped on Kenny Galladay offseason, but I'm going to stop right now and say that I do not like Kenny Galladay this week. He's only going to cost you 6% of your salary, and we love this guy. Extremely talented. A couple of years from now, he could be an elite receiver. He could be a dominant wideout, but right now, he's still third on the depth chart, right? Behind Jones and Tate, Marvin Jones and Golden Tate, who had very good weeks last week. Um, Kenny Gall, they can't do. Like last week, he had huge volume. Uh, that was because of the blowout against the Jets. That's not going to be able, they're not going to be able to do that again, right? There's not going to be enough for him to get a bunch of targets and for Marvin Jones and Golden Tate to all get their targets. That sort of blowout and passing the ball that much won't happen again. And as a third wideout, he's the guy that loses targets first. So avoid Kenny Galladay this week, even though he's cheap. 
Um, that's it for the wideouts. Again, trying to stay away from the negatives, trying to stay away from the avoid these guys and more, right? What kind of deals can we find? Those are some guys that I think are really, really good options. Let's move on to the tight ends now. This is kind of a position that I know a lot of people dread. So it's very important that we give you a couple names, although we're going to keep it pretty short and simple here at the end. All right, so like I said, a lot of people, they just don't want to do research for their tight ends. And I get it. Tight ends are not the you know most exciting position out there. They're not the funnest. They don't get the most fantasy points. When we talk about daily fantasy. You sometimes entering contests with over a thousand people, thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people like you, they can be huge. You cannot miss. If you want to win, you have to dominate. It's not like regular fantasy when you're playing one other guy and you just need to beat him. You need to beat everyone. And how can you beat everyone? And that means you're going to have to start the right players at the right positions every single week. How about George Kittle, man? I uh, got to give credit to Rob. He was the first guy who really gave attention to George Kittle. Um, and I followed suit fairly soon, but man, he caught on to him a little bit quicker than me this offseason way back in like March and April and May. But uh, he's going to cost you 8 to 9 percent of your salary. He is hands down week one. He was easily, easily Jimmy Garoppolo's favorite target. He had five catches for 90 yards against a really good Vikings defense. In fact, a very good Vikings defense that usually matches up very good against tight ends. Um, a lot of people make the misconception of assuming that tight ends are covered by linebackers. In the modern day NFL, especially under that Viking system, the guy who very often is covering tight ends is who, who other than Harrison Smith, right? Harrison Smith does a lot of that. The other guy being Anthony Barr, two great options to cover tight ends. And yet Kittle was still able to go out there and get five catches for 90 yards. And in fact, if it weren't for kind of, I guess, just a little bit of bad luck, not a great play, he could have had a touchdown and over 100 yards. Uh, he looked fantastic. It was just slightly overthrown by Jimmy Garoppolo because that awesome Vikings defense just really getting pressure. Kill looks amazing, right? Like, I'm very surprised how well he did week one against such a good defense, and he's very cheap. Um, on top of that, he plays against Detroit, a defense that made Sam Darnold, in Rob's words, made Sam Darnold look like Joe Montana. Sam Darnold's a rookie rookie quarterback, and, you know, there are some times where it's just like you don't get credit for winning, right? Um, now, they did lose, but even if Detroit had won, it's like, uh, you're supposed to beat him. He's a rookie quarterback, and yet somehow Sam Darnold went out there and looked fantastic. That Detroit defense is terrible, and now they're playing the 49ers. George Kittle, I wouldn't be surprised if he found the end zone. I wouldn't be surprised if he had 75 or even over 100 yards. That's probably like one of the best options this week. As far as what you pay for him and what you're going to get from him, love George Kittle. Like The hype is real on him. A lot of people are underestimating him, but here at the FFP, we love him. And then the other option that we like is David Njoku. <clears throat> Excuse me. He's going to cost you about 5 to 6% of your salary. He plays the New Orleans Saints. Saints defense, which, as we mentioned before, played terrible last week, right? I don't think that the Saints defense is horrible, worse than the NFL, but when you go out and allow Tampa Bay to do what they did against you, you should be ashamed. Deshaun Jackson, an aging wide receiver who lost his spot on the depth chart, goes out and gets two TDs against you and lights it up. Defense isn't great. David Njoku is a very, very, very athletic tight end. Like, cannot argue with athleticism and the physical capability and so I absolutely love that huge playmaker against a not very good defense I hate to pick on the Saints guys every week we kind of pick on a team right and then somebody in the comments gets mad the Saints are a good team they're going to make playoffs they're going to be fine but the defense ain't pretty and I love starting Dave Njoku for about five to six percent of your salary against them this week absolutely worth the play would not be surprised like if they're going to stay in that game if the Browns are going to be able to compete then he is going to have to find the end zone, and I wouldn't be surprised if he did. I like Tyrod Taylor. I think that he could be a very good option. They played well last week against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, maybe in future weeks we'll talk more about tight ends. However, those are the only two tight ends I decided to talk about this week. Um, and so that's kind of where I'm at with that. Obviously, I, you guys don't need me to tell you start Kelsey, start Ertz, start Evans, start Gronk. Those are all great options, but it comes back to this idea of what we talked about. How can you manage your money to hit a home run? 
And if you want to hit home runs and afford to pay for a big name running back, a big name wideout, a big name quarterback, all those other positions, you got to save money at tight end. You do. And of course, we want to get those guys. But Kittle, Najoku, fantastic options this week. So let's move on. Finally, we're going to skip kickers. Now, most daily fantasy leagues do not do kickers. And so but we're going to skip that. If you guys are saying, hey, in the comments, we do kickers. We do kickers every week. Like, let me know. Absolutely ask that. Now, if it's for your regular fantasy leagues, not daily fantasy, um, just watch our daily start sit. I believe we talk about kickers now. Rob does that video. Um, but we're not going to do that in this video again. If you're in a daily fantasy league that does kickers, let me know and we can certainly add that in. But honestly, I really doubt it. And nobody wants to hear about kickers. Maybe we should. Maybe we're just mean to kickers. But like they're a boring position to talk about. Um, and so that's kind of that. So we're just going to skip straight to defense. And I'm going to do one good defense and one bad defense. Um, that's about it. And then, of course, leave a comment and tell me what you think. All right, so now we're here talking about uh, the defenses, and um, let's talk about uh, first, I like Houston's defense. First of all, they're going to only cost you 5% of your salary. That is so cheap. That's like the cheapest we have seen yet. That's insane. Now, they're playing Tennessee this week, who might not be out uh, with, with Marcus Mariota. Marcus Mariota may not play, and a huge kind of playmaking defense like Houston, like Tyron Matthew and J.J. Watt, like they've got athletic players on that team. If you put a bad quarterback under center, they will get turnovers. They will perform. And so if Marcus Mariota does not play, you cannot sit Houston's defense. They could be a fantastic option this week. If Mariota plays, he will probably be, you know, a little bit under the weather, a little bit not healthy. He could still be a good option, but certainly not as much of a good option. So keep that in mind. We talk about in fantasy, constantly monitoring the situation, understanding the health of players and what's happening and how important that is. Keep an eye on that. Unfortunately, we try to get this video ahead of time. And so I won't be able to tell you, you know, it's not Sunday morning. I can't tell you what it's like Sunday morning. It's Thursday night, but we try to get this out ahead early so as many people as possible can see this. Um, and then the bad is the Detroit Lions defense. We talked about how bad they were. They made Isaiah Crawl look good. They made Robbie Anderson look good. They made Sam Darnold look good. The whole Jets offense just looked awesome against them. Um, uh, they're going to cost you 9% and they're playing against the 49ers. The 49ers are not a bad offense. Uh, they didn't do great against the Vikings defense, but again, Arguably the best defense in the NFL, extremely dominant, plays very well. Mike Zimmer is a defensive-minded coach, first game of the season. I'm not surprised the 49ers struggled. Um, and then again, you're going to pay you know 9% of your salary for a defense that played terrible against the Jets and has even, honestly, a better offense to play this week. Could be a very, very bad week for that defense. Uh, no offense to Lions fans, but that uh, that is kind of the weakness of that team right now. So that's the good and that's the bad for defenses. Now, I'd love to continue to talk to you guys more about this in the future. So course leave a comment down below we'll keep talking about these players let me know if you have questions about specific players people ask me a lot of times i love specific players you know him or him or this or that or what do i do right i absolutely love that as always guys we thank you so much for watching you have a great day and god bless